in the previous lecture we studied Kirchhoff's laws and we solved an example on that in today's video we are going to solve two problems using Kirchhoff's laws now let's take the problems one after the other in problem one we have two voltage sources we have the 5 volts and then the 7 volts and then we also have three resistors which are the 1 ohm resistor we have the 3 ohms resistor and then we also have the 2 ohms resistor and what we are going to do is to find the current flowing through all parts of the circuit now to solve this problem we first of all need to assign currents in the circuit now we know that current is always going to flow from a higher potential to a lower potential so we can assign current i moving from the higher potential and then returning to the lower potential so we have i flowing towards this junction now at this point the current is going to split so let's say i1 will flow in this direction and then the rest which is i minus i1 will flow in that direction now after assigning current we need to consider each loop at a time now we are going to use the Kirchhoff's voltage law which states that the sum of the voltage source should be equal to the sum of the voltages dropped across the passive elements so now considering this loop we are going to move in the clockwise direction so we are going to have the voltage source which is 5 volts equals now we have current i flowing through the 1 ohm resistor so we are going to have 1 times i and then plus 3 into brackets we have i minus i1 flowing in this direction in line with the direction that we took so that's going to be i minus i1 so now let's expand we have 5 equals 1 times i is i and then 3 times i is 3i and then 3 times negative i1 is negative 3i1 now we have i and then we have i here so we are going to add the two i's so we have i plus 3i is 4i and then minus 3i1 now let's call this equation 1 so now let's consider the second loop in the second loop we realize that the higher potential is this time at the bottom now let's always consider current to move from a higher potential to a lower potential in that sense we are going in the clockwise direction now what this primarily means is that i minus i1 is going to oppose the flow that we took so from the second loop we have 7 equals we have negative 3 into brackets i minus i1 because i minus i1 is moving in the anti-clockwise direction however we took the clockwise direction now i1 is in line with the direction we took i1 is moving in the clockwise direction so it's going to be positive i1 so we are going to have plus 2 i1 now let's expand so we are going to have 7 equals we have negative 3 times i and then we have negative times negative which is positive so we are going to have positive 3 i1 plus 2 i1 then we have negative 3 i plus 3 plus 2 is 5 so we have 5 i1 now let's call this equation 2 now from equation 2 let's make i1 the subject so to make i1 the subject we need to transpose negative 3i to the left hand side so that's going to be 7 plus 3i equals 5i1 now we divide both sides of the equation by 5 and we have i1 to be equal to 7 plus 3i over 5 now 7 divided by 5 is 1.4 and then 3i divided by 5 is 0.6i so this is 
equation 3 let's call this equation 3 now we are going to put equation 3 into equation 1 now equation 1 is 5 equals 4i minus 3i1 now we have i1 to be 1.4 plus 0.6i that's from equation 3 so now let's multiply across so we have 5 equals 4i minus 3 times 1.4 is 4.2 and then 3 times 0.6 is 1.8 so we have one. now we have 4i and then we have negative 1.8i now 4i minus 1.8i is 2.2i and then we are going to transpose negative 4.2 to the left hand side so that we have 5 plus 4.2 which is 9.2 so we divide both sides of the equation by 2.2 and then we have i to be equal to 4.18 so i is equal to 4.18 amperes so from equation 3 we had i1 to be equal to 1.4 plus 0.6 i and then we have i to be 4.18 so we are going to substitute 4.18 into this equation now 1.4 plus 0.6 into bracket 4.18 is equal to 3.91 so we have I1 to be 3.91 amperes. And then for I minus I1, I is 4.8 or 4.18. And then minus I1 is 3.91. So we have 3.91, which is equal to 4.18 minus 3.91 is equal to 0.27. So I minus I1 is equal to 0 0.27 amperes. So these are the currents that flow through all parts of the circuits. Now let's solve the other example. So for problem two, we have two voltage sources. We have the seven volts and then the 10 volts. And then we also have six resistors connected in the circuit. Now we are going to find the current flowing through all parts of the circuit. Now the first thing to do is to assign current. So we are going to assign current I moving in this direction, approaching this junction. Now at this point, we have I1 moving in this direction because the current I is going to split. And then we have the rest which is I minus I1 moving in that direction. Now at this point, I1 is also going to divide. So we have I2 moving in this direction and then I1 minus I2 moving in that direction. Now at this point, we have I2 entering the negative terminal of the 10 volts voltage source. Now at this point, the current that is going to leave the 10 volts is still I2. At this point, we have I2 combining with I1 minus I2. So I2 plus I1 minus I2. You realize that negative I2 is going to cancel out I2. So we have I1 moving through the 2 ohms resistor. And then at this point, I1 is going to combine with I minus I1, which means that we have negative I1 cancelling I1. So I will return to the negative terminal of the 7 volt voltage source. So now let's consider each loop at a time. Now we are going to consider this loop. Now for this loop, the voltage source is 7 volts. 
so that's going to be equal to the sum of the voltage drops so we are going to have 2 multiplied by i which is 2i plus we have 3 into brackets i minus i1 now let's expand so we have 7 equals 2i plus 3i minus 3i1 now we can add 2 and then 3 to get 5i and then minus 3i1 now let's call this equation 1 now let's consider the second loop let's move in the clockwise direction now in the second loop the voltage source is 0 so we are going to have 0 equals we have i1 moving in the clockwise direction so that's going to be 5i1 plus we also have i1 minus i2 moving in the clockwise direction so we have 2 into brackets i1 minus i2 plus we also have i1 moving in the clockwise direction so plus 2 i1 and then we realize that i minus i1 is moving in the anti-clockwise direction so we are going to have minus 3 into brackets i minus i1 so now let's expand so it's going to be 0 equals 5i1 plus 2i1 minus 2i2 plus 2i1 minus 3i plus 3i1 now we have negative 3i and then we have 5 plus 2 which is 7 now 7 plus 2 is 9 and 9 plus 3 is 12 so we have plus 12 i1 and then we have negative 2 i2 so minus 2 i2 now let's call this equation 2 now for the third loop we are going to take the clockwise direction so that's going to be we have 10 volts we have 10 volts equals we have i2 moving in the clockwise direction so we have positive 2 i2 and then we have i1 minus i2 moving in the anti-clockwise direction so that's going to be negative 2 into brackets i1 minus i2 so now let's expand so we have 2 i2 minus 2 i1 plus 2 i2 so we are going to have 10 equals negative 2 i1 and then we have 2 plus 2 which is 4 so we have plus 4 i2 now let's call this equation 3 so now we have three equations so what we are going to do is to make i2 the subject from equation 2 and substitute the expression into equation 3 so that we can compare with equation 1 to find the values of i i1 and i2 so from equation 2 if you want to find the expression for i2 we need to transpose negative 2 i2 to the left hand side so that's going to be 2 i2 equals negative 3 i1 negative 3 i sorry plus 12 i1 now we divide both sides of the equation by 2 and then we have i2 to be equal to negative 1.5 plus 6i1 so let's call this equation 4 so now we are going to put equation 4 into equation 3 so from equation 3 we have 10 equals negative 2i i1 plus 4 into brackets i2 now i2 is negative 1.5 plus 6 i1 
So now let's expand. We are going to have 10 equals negative 2 i1 minus 4 times negative 1.5 is negative 6. And then 4 times 6 is what? 24. So we have 24 i1. Notice that here is supposed to be negative 1.5i. So here is also supposed to be negative 1.5i. So 4 times negative 1.5i is negative 6i. So now it's going to be 10 equals negative 6i. And then we have negative 2i1 plus 24i1, which is positive 22 i1 so let's call this equation 5 so now let's compare equation 5 and equation 1 those are the two equations we are going to work with so now let's write down the two equations so equation 1 was 7 equals 5i minus 3i1 and then equation 5 was 10 equals negative 6i plus 22i1. So now let's make i the subject from equation 1. So from equation 1, we can have 7 plus 3i1, which means that we transposed negative 3i1 to the left hand side. So that would be equal to 5i and then we divide both sides of the equation by 5 and we have i to be equal to 7 plus 3i1 over 5 now that's equal to 7 divided by 5 is 1.4 and then 3i1 divided by 5 is 0.6i1 so this is the expression for i which is equation 6 now let's put equation 6 into equation 5. So we are going to have 10 equals negative 6 into bracket 1.4 plus 0.6i1 plus 22i1. So now let's expand. Now negative 6 times 1.4 is negative 8.4 and then negative 6 times 0 0.6 i1 is negative 3.6 i1 and then plus 22 i1 so we have negative 8.4 plus negative 3.6 i1 plus 22 i1 equals 18.4 i1 now let's transpose negative 8.4 to the left hand side so now 10 plus positive 8.4 is 18.4 equals 18.4 i1 now we divide both sides of the equation by 18.4 and we have i1 to be equal to 1 ampere now from equation 6, i is equal to 1.4 plus 0.6 i1, which means that we can substitute the value of i1 into this equation to get i. So i is going to be 1.4 plus 0.6 into bracket 1. That's going to be 1.4 plus 0.6 times 1 is 0.6. So i is equal to 2 amperes. So we have I to be 2 amperes and then we also have I1 to be 1 ampere. Now let's find the value of I2. Now I2 was negative 1.5 I plus 6 I1. So we have I2 to be equal to negative 1.5 i plus 6 i1 so now negative 1.5 into bracket i is 2 so we have 2 plus 6 into bracket i1 is 1 
so that's going to be negative 1.5 times 2 is negative 3 and then we have plus 6 which is equal to 3 amperes so i2 is equal to 3 amperes now we are going to find the value of i minus i1 and then i1 minus i2 now i is 2 amperes and then i1 is 1 ampere so i minus i1 is equal to 1 ampere and then i1 is 1 ampere minus i2 equals 3 amperes so i1 minus i2 is equal to negative 2 amperes so these are the values of current flowing through all parts of the circuit so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video don't forget to subscribe to receive more interesting videos bye bye